Welcome to episode 3 of Life is Strange 2 Character Profiles. In this video, we're focusing on Hannah, the strong-willed, pragmatic, yet secretly caring drifter that we meet in Humboldt County. We also got an exclusive interview with Hannah's voice actress of the same name, Hannah Pritchard. Hey, my name is Hannah and I do the voice of Hannah in Life is Strange 2. And you can follow her on Instagram and Twitter at the Hotshot Dude. Let's dive into some backstory and development about the camp's queen of no-nonsense. Spoilers ahead for Life is Strange 2 episodes 3 and 4. You have been warned. Damn vigilantes. As revealed in the initial hospital scene in episode 4, we can see that Hannah's full name is Hannah Rayom. She's a 28-year-old female of Native American descent, and our first introduction to her immediately shows that she's a free spirit and she's not embarrassed to walk around camp without clothes. Hannah's totally at peace with her body and the nature around her, more so than any other drifter in the camp. But while she's not afraid to physically bear all, when checking out her tent in the first scene of episode 3, Sean comments that... Hannah's so private about her life. Plus, she probably hates my guts. Hannah has her brown hair tied back in a ponytail, and her eyes are also brown, with a burst blood vessel in the left one. In true drifter style, she has a number of tattoos covering her face and body. These are simplistic geometric designs which are very similar to that of Native American symbols, the one on her forehead representing a bird track. In this culture, birds have a lot of deep spiritual meanings, such as freedom, direction, authority, and usually signifies a good omen. The pair of inverted triangles under her eyes could be interpreted in a lot of different ways, due to the shape's prominence in multiple cultures and groups. Generally, the triangle in an upside-down position implies female energy, the moon and mother, which seems to coincide with some aspects of Hannah's personality. Okay, lovebirds, that's it for me. A lot of work tomorrow. Other noticeable body art includes the dagger on her right bicep, perhaps signifying her toughness and aggression, the rose on the back of her hand, which could mean love and beauty, and the scorpion on the back of her other hand, which has been said to represent deadly power and intimidation, as well as sexuality in some ancient cultures. In terms of clothing, she wears a worn black t-shirt with a camo motif, paired with brown overalls that she leaves hanging at her waist. The only pops of colour in her wardrobe comes from the red shoelaces and yellow bandana she wears around one of them. Occasionally, she also wears a 90s-style purple and green windbreaker jacket, which we can also find in Finn's tent at the start of episode 3, alluding to the fact that they shared a tent, which is confirmed later on. You gonna swing by, Finn? Nah, sweetie. No energy. No big deal. Initially, Hannah seems cold and unwelcoming towards Sean, whilst being generally friendly with others she has known longer in the camp. She despises fake people, and feels that Sean is posing as being part of their group. I just fucking hate phonies. Too many here. Crusty backpack doesn't make you one of us. But after talking with her whilst helping with the chores, she'll apologise and say, Anyway, didn't mean to grill you, Sean. It was a long day showing that she's gradually more and more accepting of his presence. Hannah's tough to figure out. Don't fuck with her. But Sean isn't the only one that Hannah's wary of. Ingrid and Anders, the couple travelling across America together, aren't safe from her wrath either. In a conversation between them whilst peeling potatoes, the Swedish vacationers comment that homeless people could be helping to clear up the environment, as opposed to getting high on drugs, which really rubs Hannah the wrong way. Tell me again how many hours you spent on a plane during your awesome trip around the world, and then you come crying about hobos spreading garbage in the forest? Good point. Now you're here sponging off us trash on an illegal pot farm with a tourist visa lecturing us. Woof! Talk about a touche! In the official character casting sheet, Hannah's bio states that she doesn't like to waste time and always speaks straight to the point. She can sound daunting at times, but never patronising. She just knows what she wants whilst respecting others. When we asked voice actress Hannah Pritchard if she's similar to Hannah in any way, she had this to say. I think Hannah's stubborn, free spirit in ways is similar to my own, or maybe I just like to think that. Um, she is very matter-of-fact about what she wants, and she 
goes for it no matter what anybody says and I think I'm kind of similar in that manner. We also asked how she gets in the zone to deliver Hannah's lines and she has an interesting method. The director and producer um, would tell me to envision Hannah with a glass of whiskey in one hand and a cigarette in the other hand when I was delivering lines. You feel us, Sean? Or do we sound like depraved punks to you? As curt as she is, Hannah is as easy to drop arguments as she is to start them. She rarely holds grudges and simply wants to put her opinions across. All killer, no filler. But as for the person she bickers with the most, that award goes to Cassidy. There's definite tension between the two in the chapter called Trimigans, where Hannah has simply had enough of Cassidy moaning and saying she doesn't want to be there. Don't think, just work. Okay, just... Don't ask me to smile for the camera all day long. This escalates into more venomous speech, almost to the point of Hannah harassing Cassidy. Don't even. You're always looking for an excuse. Ooh, it's 420. Hey, Sean, let's talk. Ow, my arm hurts. Wah, wah. But again, like the confrontation with Anders and Ingrid, Hannah backs down soon enough. Hey, I don't want to fight. It's been a long, crappy week. Just keep it fucking down in here. Okay. It seems her short-tempered outbursts are balanced with an acknowledgement that she can be cranky, and Hannah is quick to apologise for acting in such a way. This is agreed by Finn later in the scene if Sean comments on the girl's behaviour. When Hannah and Cass started picking on each other. <laughs> yeah, they love to start shit with each other, then get high. <laughs> Short-term memory loss. But despite her irritability, it is clear that she's very close with the Drifter family, especially Finn, Cassidy, and Penny. Now we're all pretty fucking tight. Hell yeah, you are. Speaking of Finn, their closeness goes beyond platonic friendship. The two are self-proclaimed fuck buddies and find Sean's assumption that they're together in a conventionally romantic way pretty amusing. What? <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> you? That look on your face? Hilarious. Their freedom from society extends to sexual relationships too, and Hannah and Finn are happy to be physically involved without any of the emotional strings of typical relationships. We make our own rules. When first going through the character creation process, Don't Nod originally wrote Hannah as hailing from Colorado as part of a big poor family, and looked after by her unemployed caring father. However, as is now in the final game, she instead grew up in Santa Fe. I left Santa Fe because it was hell. No money, nobody. She confides that her mother was an artist but suffered from alcoholism and tried to get her into rehab several times to no avail. The turning point, however, was when Hannah found out that her mum had been returning paint supplies that Hannah had worked hard to buy for her in order to get cash for more booze. I just knew I had to get the fuck out where that curse would get me to. I'm glad you're at peace now. She hitched north and worked on farms until what she calls a tweaker, also known as somebody taking stimulant drugs, tried to attack her in another part of California. That is awful, Hannah. I almost killed that fuck. This past trauma doesn't stop there, though. When the group are discussing their worst moments around the campfire, I know, quite the party game, Hannah tells a story about her dog that she used to own called Black Flag. A year ago, we were hopping a train, just me, Finn, and Cass, and Black Flag. We got caught stealing some shit in some random town. Motherfuckers called the cops on us. I had to run for it. We saw that train from afar and went straight at it. Cops were right behind us. We barely made it. But nobody's able to get Black Flag. Jesus. Yeah, I see him chasing after the train, yapping at me. But I left them there. And VO artist Hannah tells us about how this scene in particular really hit home. My favorite scene to do was uh, the scene of her talking about her dog Black Flag because I have my own middle butt who, quite frankly, I think Black Flag would actually have suited him as a great name, but his name is Silas. Um, so yeah, that scene kind of hit home like doing that one, the thought of leaving your dog is a heartbreaking thought. 
A straightforward, argumentative, yet kind person who would do anything for her drifter family. We all need a friend like Hannah in our lives. What part did you like finding out about Hannah the most? And who do you want to see in our next character profile video? Let us know in the comments below. And speaking of comments, before we go, we want to give a comment shout out to some of our favourites from you guys. These are from our Community Creations video, a roundup of some of our favourite List 2 inspired artwork. You can check out the video in the card on screen now, or in the description below. Finty says so many great fan creations, I couldn't pick a favourite, they are all amazing and so unique. And also thank you for giving the Life is Strange community so much love and appreciation by making these kinds of videos and just generally keeping in touch with the fan base. It makes us feel even closer to the franchise, knowing the team behind Liss cares about their community. Smiley face. Dylan Dunn says the Life is Strange community is hella awesome, and Haley Scott says so awesome to see so many awesome fan arts I've admired before get the attention they deserve. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to be updated whenever we upload videos. I've been Lucy from the Life is Strange team here at Square Enix, and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye for now.